Welcome back to the channel. First time on YouTube, I'm going to talk about my home vineyard. As most of you know, I have eight acres of land, just a little bit over eight acres. Uh, three acres of that is pretty much grass, and I have five acres of the woods uh, where my house sits. Uh, in the front area where the grass is at, I have a, about a third of an acre designated for grapevines. And as you've seen in probably other videos, I've actually created wine from the vineyard in the past year. So it's kind of a hobby, I guess you would say. Trying to get a head start on the vineyard to get everything ready for the growing season. It starts with the tightening of the trellises. There's numerous spots on the trellis that I have to tighten every year. Uh, over time, they start to stretch out a little bit. I've got some wire and a, I can't remember the name of those uh, little garment things there, but uh, basically use that tool. It actually makes the tension happen and actually tightens up the trellis pretty good. There's several different spots on each line that I have to tighten. You can see here I'm tightening both areas of this post. You actually saw the post move just a second ago. But for the most part, it's a pretty tedious job. I've got 16 rows. I've got the rows all tightened up. I'm moving on to pruning each one of these vines. So each vine, I want to have a trunk, uh, possibly two trunks coming from the ground. Some of the vines only have one trunk, and then it splits higher up on the trunk and goes to two different arms. But ideally, you want two trunks going to two arms. Now on each arm, you want to have at least six spurs. So these are little branches coming off the arms. On each one of those spurs, you want at least two to three buds. The grapes will come from the area of the buds, so it's important that you uh, try to get those numbers for the most part. I'm not too picky about this, but you want the most production out of your vine as possible. What you also see me doing is removing those green little tags. Those are basically placeholders. Uh, they keep the trunk tied to the bamboo stick that's actually holding up the trunk while it's young. Uh, you eventually remove that uh, that bamboo. I'll do that here on this plant, I believe. But then you also want to support the arms of the grapevine on top of the wire. That's why the wire is there to support the vine, the vines, and the amount of weight that you get from the grapes and the, and the foliage uh, during the summer months. Got a little fancy tool there. I kind of like it, kind of don't like it, but um, it jams up a lot. But when it's working, it works great. But you can see it's a lot easier dealing with these types of vines when there's not a bunch of leaves and obviously a bunch of grapes on them. Um, that's why you kind of get out here in the middle of March and early April to do this. My vineyard will start to bloom eh, early, uh, eh, late, late April, early, early May. Uh, you'll start seeing some action in the vineyard. It's really a pretty process when everything starts blooming. Uh, there's nothing better than the aesthetics of a vineyard on your property people in the area comment about it quite a bit it's about the only one around here i know of a couple in our county but uh, it's not a real big vineyard people think it is but when you're dealing with grapes and wine uh, it's not very big at all last year i think i got about 15 gallons of wine out of it maybe five gallons of jelly this year i hope to get double that so hopefully about 40 gallons of wine is ideal you can see as I travel down the first line, I'm actually pruning a grape called Noré. It's N-O-I-R-E-T. I think I'm pronouncing that right. It's a hybrid grape. Basically, it was created. I can't remember what university created it, but it's a red grape. It, it produces a red dry wine. Not really used for jellies or jams. It's too dry of a grape. Uh, it doesn't have that kind of flavor. But for the most part, it's a great wine grape. Um, what's amazing about these Noré grapes is uh, I planted 50 of these about two years ago, and all 50 have made it. I've never lost one, uh, which is unheard of. My other, my other types of grapevines, I've lost several, and we'll talk about that here in a few minutes. But these grapevines are phenomenal. Now you got to wonder why, why did I grow a vineyard or have a vineyard? Uh, I fell in love with wine uh, back when I left, met my wife for the first time. It's kind of grown on me the last 20 years. I love plants. I love growing things. So I thought, why not do some grapevines at my last house? I think I did about six different vines. Uh, never did stay long enough to see them produce at a level that I could actually use them. But I'm really interested in this hobby. So knowing that I like wine so much and I have the property to grow the grapes to make the wine, I thought it was a good idea. Now I started making wine from kits that you buy on Amazon. Uh, you buy a kit, it has everything you need in it, step-by-step -step directions on how to make the wine, make you understand how you're making the wine, 
which is crucial to what I'm doing nowadays. By the sounds of it, most people that do wine actually started this way, you know, just simple kits. And then once you get the hang of it, then it's pretty easy to do on your own. So like I said earlier, I have 50 of these Noré grape vines. So five rows of 10. Uh, they're spaced out about six feet from each other where each vine can actually reach out three foot each, each way. So each vine has six feet of growing space. Now the ones on the end here by the poles, I allow them to grow a little longer because they can grow past the poles and down the backside of the trellis. You can see it's a pretty tedious job, but it, it moves pretty good and um, it, it's not hard to do. I will continue to prune these grapevines throughout the whole entire year, and not as much as I'm doing right now, but uh, it is a never-ending type thing when you have a vineyard. You're always trying to correct uh, the way the vines actually grow. Okay, I'm moving into the uh, next type of grape that I have, actually. It's uh, called Catawba. Uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of that before. It's not a great wine uh, grape. It's more of a jelly jam grape. It's kind of similar to Concord. Both Catawba and Concord are kind of uh, cold uh, area type grapes. They're hardy. They can withstand temperatures that are extremely cold in the winter time. Catawba is not as strong as what the uh, um, other types of grape vines that are similar such as Concord but um, it is a um, it can be a semi-sweet one. I'm going to try it this year and make a semi-sweet. We'll see how it goes. But the jam that we made last year from these vines uh, was flat incredible. It was really good. Uh, I gave it away to all my fa family and friends, and I have none left. I know my son really enjoyed it. So these vines have been in the ground for four, four years. This will be their fifth year growing. You can tell by the size of them, they're much bigger than the last 50 that I did. They grow very, very well. I've lost a few over the years, maybe five or six of them. Um, but I've since replaced them, and I think I'm full with 50 this year. Moving on to my last type of grape, which is uh, Chardonnay. It's a Chardonnay grape, just a winter version of it, where it can grow in cooler climates. It's a very challenging grape of mine. I've struggled with these. Actually, I've lost several. I think I've replaced 15 from last year. So it's my most difficult grape, but I did get uh, five gallons of wine out of it this year. Uh, which I'm really happy with so far the taste is good. I've not released it yet But uh, it's been been a big-time challenge. I'm half tempted to replace these if I don't get a good growing year this year I think I kind of figured them out I, I pruned them too early a couple years ago, and I lost a lot of them We had a frost and they just never did grow after that So I made some mistakes on these and they're not nearly as hardy as what the Catawba is So the Catawba was able to survive that prune that year, uh, but those were not now I've got all the 150 plants all actually pruned and ready to go. I did start some late last fall. I grew my own actually, I'll go over that here in a second. But I put some smaller plants in the ground. And what you see me doing here is uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to stake them and tie them to the stake and let them grow up uh, onto the top wire. Now I'm using these blue circular tube things to prevent animals from chewing their small little branches or I guess your new little growth at the bottom of the plant rabbits, squirrels, raccoons, they all like it. So the blue tubes will not only protect them from the animals, uh, it will also protect them from the wind and it also accelerates their growth. It's a, got a shiny piece inside of them. It reflects the sun within and it keeps some of the humidity uh, within the tube too, which makes it an ideal growing location uh, or uh, area for the grapes to uh, uh, sprout to the top as fast as possible. I can't believe that this is year four of my vineyard. My dad helped me build this uh, back then and it, we had a drill that drilled the holes for the post and put the posts in and all the wires and then we planted our first 100 vines all in one year. And here we are four years later. This is the one I planted last fall and actually grew really well at the end of the year. And what I'm doing here is just simply pruning it, trying to get two trunks in the ground like I did the mature grapevines. Uh, make sure it's tied to that stake really well. And then you'll see me eventually put that tube over top of it to protect it until I can get it big enough where I don't feel like anything can chew the bottom of it off. The nice thing about this vineyard is I am close to the road there, you can see. And uh, the benefit of that is is uh, it's kind of noisy. It's, it's a state route, so there's a lot of traffic on it. It doesn't bother me as much because I hang out in the back of the house a lot. 
but up front it's ideal to keep animals and whatnot from being in my vineyard uh, they hear the noise too so it almost naturally prevents animals from being in my vineyard haven't had too many problems with animals in it or birds really it's been uh, a good location it's kind of nice seeing it from the street too and it's uh, right on the side of my driveway so every time I come home I see the vineyard and um, it's it's a nice view for a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons I've actually thought about adding onto the vineyard to the east there. The vineyard, uh, it actually, uh, you want a vineyard to kind of lay uh, north and south. That way the sun from the west and east can give it 100% uh, uh, possibility of getting sunlight. The problem I have is I do have woods to the south, which will limit some sun uh, if I get too close to the woods. And I also have woods to the east of the vineyard. And the room I have available for more vineyard is actually towards the east. So the closer I get to the woods, the less sun I get. The less sun I get means uh, it takes longer for my grapes to actually reach harvest um, um, at the end of the year, which if I go too late in the year, you know, it'll get cold and they'll freeze the grapes and they'll go rotten. So I got to be real careful on how much bigger I go. I'd love to add another 50 vines. I think it's still a possibility. Um, but we'll see after this year. We'll see how I feel about that. I'm going to really track the sun and see how much daylight sunlight I get in that area I'm talking about maybe adding on to the vineyard so I've got the trellis all tightened up I've got all the great vines pruned up I've got all the new plants protected and um, tied to their stakes and the final step I'm doing is I'm creating new plants for next year which means I'm taking the cuttings that I just took from the grape vines and I'm making three bud sticks I'm gonna take these sticks I'm gonna put them in the sand and I'm gonna watch them grow over the next year and at this time next year, those plants will be available uh, for me to plant if I want to either start a new row or replacing existing ones that die or aren't productive. I'm going to run these cuttings to a little sand bed I have over here by the firewood pile. I'm simply going to stick them in the sand, add a little water to them, and watch them grow throughout the season. At the end of this growing season, I'll put them in separate pots and they'll be available to be used next year. Well, I hope you learned something. I'm gonna bring you along the way of the vineyard throughout the seed growing season, and I'll also show you what I do with the grapes at the end of the season. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you can, please subscribe by clicking that red button, like my videos, and share them with friends and family. And like I always say, I appreciate you spending time with the Home Pro Hero.